What is up guys? Welcome to the second episode of my new series, Madden Training 101, where we'll take an in-depth look at various mechanics, features, and improvements to gameplay, and examine how closely they reflect the game of football. Today, we'll be taking a look at two gap defenders along the defensive line, their implementation in Madden, and the implications of said implementation on your defensive schemes. So first off, what does it mean when we say a defensive lineman is a two-gap defender? Well, simply put, a two-gap defender refers to a defensive lineman being responsible for two gaps at the line of scrimmage as opposed to just one. One-gap defenders simply attack whatever gap they're assigned, penetrate off the snap, and take care of any running back going through that hole. But two-gap defenders don't crash through a gap so much as they read the play, anticipate the point of attack, and clog their gap. Bearing traditional formation concepts in mind, we'll assume here that all 4-3 schemes employ 1-gap defenders on the line, while 3-4 schemes utilize 2-gap defenders. In real life though, most professional schemes utilize a combination of 1- and 2-gap defenders across multiple fronts. But again, with Madden, as we'll find out soon enough, it's safe to reject the concept of hybrid defenses and instead focus on the basics of your traditional 3-4 or 4-3 formations. So let's get back to the topic of 2-gap defensive linemen in an odd front. Now, to reiterate, the point for them is to hold their blocks, read and react, and try to make the play if it comes to either of their gaps, by either pushing their blocker into that hole or stretching their arm out just enough to stop the ball carrier's momentum. At the very least, they're holding these blocks so that the linebackers at the second level can stay clean and make the play. So how does this cerebral nature of a two-gap defender translate itself in Madden? Well, let's take a look. The Chargers line up in a single-back formation with their 10 personnel and three wideouts bunched right. But we're going to key in on the nose tackle playing the one technique in the 3-3-5 defense. We'll be focusing on the nose tackle because this position almost always has two gap responsibilities in an odd front, and it is therefore easier to discern the nose tackle's assignment behind his alignment. Now, as a two gap defender, this nose tackle must read the center's movements at the snap and determine the point of attack. If the run goes to the weak side A gap, well, he's already lined up in that gap and can disrupt the play. But if he reads strong side run, he must prevent the center from peeling off to the will by commanding a double team and holding his block in that strong side A gap. So the ball is snapped and it's a quick pitch play side. The tackle cannot get reached, but instead of reading the direction of the flow at the snap, the nose tackle here just attempts to penetrate that backside A gap immediately, much like a one gap defender would. The center combos and peels to the will and the strong side A gap is not even remotely held. The lane is not clogged, and the no tackle's inability to read and react to the offense allows for the will to be disrupted. Now, that's just one example. Let's take a look at another. Later in the drive, the Chargers again come out single back formation. 10 personnel, trips to the right, but this time it's a dive up the middle. And again, let's focus in on the nose tackle, playing the one technique in a 3-3-5, just like before. And again, just like before, he's responsible for both the backside and the playside gaps, pending his read on the center. So, the ball is snapped. Sure enough, it's a dive through the strong side A gap, so the nose tackle should attack play side. Instead, he tries to penetrate the gap he's lined up over immediately, and once again, he allows the center to combo and peel to the will, taking the cutback defender out of the equation. Perhaps most discouraging though, is how the nose tackle attacks the guard by attempting to flow weak side against the point of attack. By attempting to disengage weak side, it suggests that the nose tackle is programmed to attack gaps rather than the lineman as would a two gap defender in real life. This has broader and admittedly negative implications along the line of scrimmage. One being that the AI tells linemen how to attack and penetrate their gaps, but not how to read and react to what the offense is doing. What this means is that linemen responsible for two gaps does not exist in Madden. But what does this mean when employing odd fronts in Madden, where two gap defenders are traditionally used? Well, it means that there will often be a gap that is unaccounted for and will either force you to put an extra man in the box to make up for said unaccounted gap, which leaves your secondary exposed, or you'll just be more likely to get hit with big runs given the gap vulnerability. Either way, the inability of two gap defenders along the defensive line to, well, maintain responsibility for two gaps puts common 3-4 and 3-3-5 fronts at a major disadvantage. So that's it for this week. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Follow my channel during the weeks leading to release for more meticulous Madden analysis and critique. Madden NFL 15 arrives on August 26 for the Xbox One, PS4, PS3, and Xbox 360. Finally, if you liked the video, please drop a like, and if you really liked it, subscribe for weekly gaming content. And with that, once again, I'm out.